the Solar Dish Sterling System, or Suncatcher for short. We use the dish to track the sun, much like a sunflower. So in the morning, the sun rises in the east, it tracks through the day, and it sets in the west. So it follows just like a sunflower. Each dish will power about 12 to 15 homes by itself right now. And we can think on a large scale, and we are for the two uh, California projects. And those systems, when fully built out, will have 70,000 of these systems that'll generate 1.75 gigawatts. So that power is enough for more than a million Southern California homes. So these are massive in scale. You can extend the system into very large facilities, not only for Southern California, but the southwestern part of the U.S. There's plenty of sunshine. It's a great area for it. And then globally, most of the areas where mankind lives are in great solar regions, so it can extend out globally. So some of the key elements of the dish system here is the dish concentrator. It's about 38 feet in diameter. There are 82 mirrors on it. Each mirror is about 3 foot by 4 foot, about a square meter. And this takes the solar energy, concentrates it, and reflects it up to the receiver of the power conversion unit. That's where all that intense heat is concentrated, and we use that fierce heat then to drive the Stirling engine. The Stirling engine housed in the power conversion unit is the key to turning blazing solar heat into usable electricity. So this is the power conversion unit with the Stirling engine right here, which is the heart of the system. And this basically takes that concentrated solar energy, that fierce heat that's here on the receiver, to heat a gas, in this case it's hydrogen. Take a gas, you heat it, it expands, when you cool it, it contracts. That pushes a piston down to turn a crankshaft to turn this generator to make electricity here. Okay, we're looking at the insides of a Stirling engine and starting with the heater heads where all that intense solar energy is collected and we basically have tubes here that we have hydrogen flowing on the inside and as I mentioned earlier, when you heat a gas it expands and when you cool it it contracts and so we use that expansion and contraction to actually drive a piston here. But you can see there isn't anything that's really special or exotic here and that's what allows us to have a highly efficient system but also achieve ultra low cost. 